bab kufi igiri se jalina data ole nurka wala bumana ti bakata ya le ja ko bab parodi bari mil kida ya korma ko bab parodi bari mil kida bari mil kida ami ya ko be de sumana wa bari mil kida anoromo be de sumana wa with a population of over 40 million they are the most populous home of Africa tribe. They are women, maybe their most beautiful women I have ever seen. And when they dance, it is mad good to see. They live in some of the most beautiful fertile lands known to man. And they practically discovered coffee. How cool is that? Meet the amazing aroma of the Horn of Africa. Hello. Welcome again to Afro Artista Films and as usual, give this video a like and kindly consider subscribing. I am so grateful that you are here with me and thank you so much for your support. The following are 15 surprising and cool facts about beautiful Oromo people of Kenya and Ethiopia. Number 1. The Oromo are a Cushitic ethnic group native to the Oromia region of Ethiopia and parts of northern Kenya in the Marsabit County, Isiolo County, and Tana River County. They speak the Oromo language, also called Afano Romo, which is part of the Cushitic branch of the Afro Asiatic language family. With a population of 41 million, they are one of the largest ethnic groups in the Horn of Africa and the third most populous ethnic group among all of Africa. Number two, let's talk about the genetics. The origin of all Kushites is thought to be in southern Egypt and northern Sudan, where they may have arisen through contact between the Pertormelot, a motif from the Omo Valley, ancient Natufians who came into Egypt from the Levant, and East African hunter-gatherers. Their closest cousins are the Somali and their far people. According to iDNA analysis by Herbo in 2011, around 82% of Oromo in Kenya carried a paternal E1B1B haplogroup. This lineage is most common among local afro asiatic speaking populations. The percentages will vary amongst different Oromos depending on their location. Oromos are a heterogeneous group and many are mixed with other groups such as the Somali, Nilot, Habesha and Omotics. As such, their DNA is quite varied and they have an extremely wide range of phenotypes depending on which location they live. Number 3. Origins According to Oro history, the father of the Oroma people was Orma. The two sons of Orma, that is Borama and Barentu, give rise to the two ethnic groups of the Oroma people. Barentu Oromo are found primarily in Ethiopia. The Borana Oromo live in southern Ethiopia and northern Kenya. Historical linguistics and comparative ethnology studies suggest that the Oromo people probably first settled around Lake Cuba here and Lake Chamo. They are a Cushitic people who have inhabited East Africa, specifically the area south and the east of the Bali Mountains, since at least the early first millennium. The aftermath of the 16th century Ethiopian Adal War led to the Oromos moving to the north. The Romans increased in numbers through assimilation as well as the inclusion of mixed peoples. The native names of the territories were replaced by the name of the Oromo plains who settled on it while the indigenous people were assimilated. Number 4. Beautiful Women The Oromos have some of the most beautiful women I have ever seen. Their faces are symmetrical, long and slim with wonderful eyebrows. Their complexion is a gorgeous caramel shade of melanin. Their smiles are enchanting and their movements when they are dancing are graceful. When they smile, evidence of divine touch in their creation is clear. Many have long feminine hair and they proudly swish it in the air when they dance. Oromo ladies, like other Ethiopian ladies, are easily the most beautiful women on earth. They know it, but they also know that outer beauty may fade with time. So they are beautiful on the inside too. They hold on to traditional values and may be perceived as conservative. 
this, in this age of toxic wokeness and feminism, is actually a good thing. What do you think? Number 5. Their influence on the Somali is visible through the Gara tribe of Somalis who speak a Borana influenced dialect of Somali. Here is a sample of the Gare language. I miss you in English. I miss you in Somalia. 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 I miss you in Many Somalis and Oromos look indistinguishable due to decades of gene flow as well as common Christianic heritage. The Gabra people of Kenya are another Oromo speaking sub tribe with a heavy Somali influence. <laughs> Number 6. According to the 2007 census, 40 to 45 percent of Oromos are Christian, 55 to 60 percent are Sunni Muslims, and 3.3 percent follow the ancient Oromo religion known as Wakefana. Here is a video of some Oromo Christians in church. It looks so weird to see hijab wearing women in church, doesn't it? Number 7. Oromos largely live in the more fertile southern, central, and western Ethiopia. There is less food insecurity, and basically it's not as difficult to acquire as they are for Habisha or Somalis. The majority of the Oromo people are farmers. Almost 90% of them live in rural areas and work in agriculture. They are known for producing coffee and pulses. They live in some of the most beautiful fertile lands in Ethiopia. A small percentage, specifically the Barana Oromos, live as nomads and keep traveling while tending to their animals at the same time. Number 8. The Oromo people are known for their Gada system. It is a democratically highly developed system based on age group with the defined role system of governors in which a leader is elected for eight years. It is one of the earliest examples of a fully developed democratic system. The Gada Council was responsible for the regulation of every aspect of life and not just the political side of things. Number 9. Oromo language is an Afro-Asiatic language that is written in the Latin alphabet and has a very complicated phonology. Unlike other languages in Ethiopia like Amharic, Oromo is a macro language which can be defined as a group of individual languages which are closely related to each other and are considered as a single language in certain contexts. For a long time, the language was banned and could not be studied in school. During the 40s, Haile Selassie banned Afan Oromo from being taught or used. The first Oromo radio broadcasting station was not even based in Ethiopia, but in Mogadishu. The ban on the language would only be lifted in the early 90s. And that is why the Oromo speak it proudly today as an act of resistance. More than 35% of Ethiopia's population are Oromo mother tongue speakers, which makes it the most widely spoken primary language in Ethiopia. It is also the most widely spoken Cushitic language and the fourth most widely spoken language of Africa after Arabic, Hausa, and Swahili. Even though they account for the biggest chunk of the population, they don't have much political power in Ethiopia. For a long time, Oromo people have been persecuted and discriminated against for various reasons. There are documented human rights violations against the Oromo in Ethiopia under three successive regimes. Most of the Oromo families had to change their names to Amhara to attend school. 
both peaceful integration and violent competition between Oromos and other neighboring ethnicities such as the Amhara, Sidama, Afar, and the Somali adversely affected politics in the Oromo community. Number 11. The Oromo Liberation Front is an Oromo nationalistic political party formed in 1973 to promote self-determination for the Oromo people inhabiting today's Oromia region and Oromia region in the Amhara region of Ethiopia. Their fundamental objective, the fundamental objective of the Oromo Liberation Movement is to gain self-determination for the Oromo people. In January 2012, a press release announced that the OLF would no longer seek succession from Ethiopia. Instead, the group announced it would pursue unity and freedom and work with other political groups. Number 12. Did you know, between the 12th and 19th centuries, the Oromo had one of the strongest militaries in the Horn of Africa? The military was well organized because of a strong political and social structure called Gada, which helped ensure power sharing and order among the people. Number 13. Let's talk about the Oromo cuisine, shall we? Kiaromo's cuisine consists of various vegetable and the meat dishes and entrees. Pork is typically not in Oromo cuisine as it is considered taboo for Orthodox and Muslim Oromos who make up over 90% of the population combined. Oromo people are believed to be one of the first to cultivate coffee in Ethiopia and recognize its energizing effect. The word coffee itself is thought to have originated from the Oromo language. Number 14. While slaves were a stratum within the society, many Oromos, regardless of caste, were sold into slavery elsewhere. By the 19th century, Oromo slaves were sought after, and a major part of slaves sold in Gonda and the Galabat slaves markets in Ethiopia's Sudan border, as well as the Masawa and Tajura markets on the Red Sea. There was also a large slave market at Al Hodeida on the coast of Yemen. Lastly, number 15, let's talk about the Oromo calendar. The Oromo people traditionally have their own calendar known as the Gada calendar. It is based on the phases of the moon and has 13 months, each with its own distinct name and cultural significance. With that, we come to the end of yet another insightful look into the Oromo tribe. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Kampir da balami, kampir da balami.